Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Road. Today, we're pulling away the hype. We're taking away the special bottles. Allocation of bourbon is very, very frustrating. So we're going we're gonna to set all that aside today. And we are going to focus on five bud budget-friendly bottles that are probably sitting on your liquor shelf that you probably have overlooked. But if you end up enjoying this video, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. It's very, very helpful. Now let's dive into the first bottle. It is Evan Williams 1783. This is a bottle that I actually was not very familiar with. I've had the Evan Williams white label, Evan Williams black label. And uh, overall, I've, I've enjoyed those okay you know they're decent especially the white labels a decent cocktail mixer there's nothing to complain about but a while ago i finally picked one up and i did a video about it and i really really enjoyed it i wanted to include it in this one because it's, you know it's pretty impressive on the nose there's this nice little bit of caramel a little bit of peanut not too much though and then there is a mild nuttiness which you do get on evan williams which is you know kind of a heaven hill vibe on this it's a little bit stronger than other heaven hill products though not like uh, not like a Jim Beam though. It's not like that that nutty on the nose. Uh, there's a little bit of a baking spice in there, touch of cinnamon maybe, and cinnamon and nutmeg. Smells really pretty pleasant for the twenty three twenty four dollar bottle. Coming in at ninety proof, it has a decent mouth feel. It's not amazing, but it has a nice little caramel touch of lemon up front, and then it fades a little bit, and then you get a little bit more of kind of a peanuttiness little breadiness in there, like peanut butter on toast kind of thing. It's really, really easy sipping. Uh, the reason, Part of the reason I put this in here is I'm trying to convert all of you Evan Williams white label lovers to this, because I think this is better. Next up is Green River Weeded Bourbon coming in at 90 proof. Now this one is one I've talked about and I've been a huge fan of in the past, but you know, it came out and I was like, oh my gosh, I love Green River and I still do. But Overall, I just really haven't talked about it in a long time, and I just, I don't see other people talking about it, and, and you know, the Green River single barrels are around these days, they started doing picks, and so those are pretty exciting to get a cast strength versions of these, and, but this one overall just, I don't think it's getting enough love lately. The nose reminds me of carrot cake, not with, fr like, cream cheese frosting, not that kind of thing, but just the carrot cake itself, a little bit of that baking spice in, there's some allspice, some nutmeg brown sugar, a little bit of white sugar, really, really nice nose on this thing. These things are usually right around $30, $35. They're not that expensive. And for, a, honestly, a tremendously good smelling whiskey, we'll see how it tastes in a second. I think it's a great buy. On the palate, you get a little bit of that wheat. It's not super strong, though. You do get some very, very nice kind of brown sugary vibe. Um, it's kind of sweet. You do. I'm getting a little of uh, a little bit of a nuttiness on it now little barrel oak as well. It's not super viscous, super syrupy, uh, or, or thick in the mouth, but it's also not, you know, it's kind of what you would expect for a $30, $35 bottle. I have put this up against like the Weller Green Label, the Special Reserve, and they're pretty close uh, comparisons. I know some people prefer one versus the other, but I think this is actually a decent alternative to that Weller Green Label, and you don't have to pay a secondary price or hunt for it or anything and it's just sitting on the shelf and it gives you a very very nice uh, weeded bourbon experience and it doesn't come across uh, to me makers marks even though they're weeded a lot of the makers marks the lower and maker mark makers mark products they have a little bit of this kind of bittery finish and this does not have that and and so it's just very nice very simple and very easy next is nasif family reserve this thing's coming in at 107 proof and it's only like $45, it, $40 to $45, super, super affordable for the quality that you get out of this in that 107 proof. It's it's legit. It's got this very kind of like toasted cookie, like toasted shortbread cookie thing. Little bit of like white sugar on top, almost like those, um, you know, those 10 cookies that you used to have, like your mom would put her knitting stuff in or sewing stuff in. But before the sewing stuff was in there, there was cookies in there. It reminds me kind of like that shortbread cookie thing. It's really pretty pleasant. A little bit of proof on the nose, but it's super easy. It's not burning at all. I, I'm a fan of the nose on this one. The palette on this is just gorgeous. I mean, I like the other ones, but just for $10 more, the palette on this thing is just gorgeous. 
a little bit of red apple. It's a little drying in the in the mouth. There is some um, some nice caramel, a little bit of vanilla. It's got this little. It's got this interesting balance of spice, where it's not hot, spicy. It's not cinnamon, spicy, but it's got this. It's it's got this little bit of something, really really pleasant. You know, Nasif. It's part of Cat's Eye. It's a uh, Cat's Eye Distilling, and they they do some great stuff. And uh, totally totally recommend this bottle. It, you know, if it's in your store, it's going to be sitting on the shelf. It's not special. It's not allocated. But the flavors are beyond special. Next up is Michter's Small Batch. Now, this thing's 91.4 proof and runs around $45 to $47 most places. And the reason it's in this list is because, it, to me, it's for that under $50, the more budget-friendly stuff. This has one of the most complex and... Uh, ag tasting whiskeys that you'll get for under under you know 50 bucks because it gives you a lot more complexity in my opinion than a lot of other stuff that sits on the shelf and uh, honestly a lot of other like even less expensive allocated stuff frankly on the nose i get this really nice uh wood char some brown sugar a little bit of like a cream cheese frosting so a little floral note, a little dusty as well. Just a lot going on on this thing. At 91 and change proof, it is really sippable, very, very easy. You get this really, really nice kind of older oak taste, which a lot of the younger stuff just doesn't have, regardless of how good they are. This just brings it to the, really brings that age note forward. A little bit, a uh, little charcoal, chewy quality as well really really good there's a little bit of like a sour citrusy thing uh toward the mid palate the finish it's a little drying a little more complex than the others really really nice it, it's a great bottle in my opinion for 45 ish dollars and one it's been out for a long time it's nothing special about it and i think a lot of people overlook it last up tonight is bullet 10 year this is a 91.2 proof bourbon and it's shockingly good for right around $50. Whereas the Mictors, you get this like older oak smell. This one, you get a little bit of that old musty barrel that I just love. For a 10 year under $50, it, it, you know, you don't find that many 10 year whiskeys under $50 except for what Russell's 10 and Eagle Rare. Uh, outside of that, to get 10 years, meh. Yeah, the, well, it's Knob Creek 9, so it's close to 10 years. But aside from those three, you don't have a lot of other options. To me, is way better than the Russells uh, 10 year. I haven't had great luck with the Russells. They're okay, and I don't dislike them. Um, but I've had a couple off bottles. They're not bad, but this is better to me. Just that little bit of that funky old barrel. Some caramel, just a little bit. It's really mild. And then it's got this like baking good quality on the nose that's just really really pleasant you do get a little bit of that funky mustiness which is just so so good a little bit of kind of this candy uh saltwater taffy it's a little drying as well it's kind of creamy there's this uh interesting kind of a syrupy creaminess it's not like thick creaminess but a little syrupy kind of thing does have this it's got this really good like cinnamon sugar danish thing which i'm, I'm kind of digging right now to be honest i haven't had this in a while i actually had to pop the cork on this bottle because i finished the last one a long time ago and hadn't hadn't uh, been paying attention and um got this one and and uh when i when i was coming up with the video idea and i'm like you know what i bet you everybody else has forgotten about that bullet 10 year two so <laughs> i pulled it out and uh included it in the blind not the blind but in the uh, video tonight it's really really good definitely recommend it um, obviously I think bullet source stuff, you know, it says it's, um, bottled by bullet distilling in Louisville where they actually get it from. They don't say, but we got some ideas. It is in Kentucky. So, and it's 10 year and it's pretty darn good. Well, these are five budget friendly shelf sitters that I think people overlook. And frankly, with the economy, the way it is budgets, the way they are. And, uh, you know, if some people don't want to deal with hunting and whatever. You just want to drink some good whiskey. Well, these are some 
great, great bottles that are just sitting on the shelf at your local store that maybe you want to pick up and try sometime if you haven't. You might have overlooked them or maybe you forgot about them. I know that's what happened with me with some of these. But anyway, if you ended up enjoying this video, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And until next time, find a bottle you love.